Wow. I think that there's so much just nobility in that and humility in the knowing that like it can feel like we're in friction towards society, even though we're in like grace and rhythm with the Holy Spirit, grace and rhythm with what he would have our pace be. And yet society shows this like catapult sometimes. Right. And you're like, how do they get there in that way? And, and not to say it's less hard work or more hard work. It's I think all of it's hard work when you're getting to any level, especially in that that realm. Um, but it's this humility factor of saying, like, I'm still here. I'm still pursuing. I'm still becoming is the is kind of the word and phraseology that we always use here in the Fit and Faith podcast because of my book of always becoming like we're nobody's made it anywhere. We're all becoming and that a fast ascension can lead to a fast demise mm -hmm. because we're not being cultivated or shaped from that mindset renewal, from that inner self, that knowing or even just the ability to be strong and carry it as humility versus ego. And so I am excited because I really do feel like there is this evolution, this revival happening, especially in God's girls to speak <laughs> up, to stand out, right? And it's that, that Esther moment, that Esther revolution. Mm -hmm. And so to know that there is someone like yourself that is just literally infusing the airwaves in a different way than my microphone does, um, but also infusing multiple, multiple ethnic cultures. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of power um, to, to that because it doesn't divide us. It's actually doing something that a lot of people aren't doing right now, which is, is connecting. Absolutely. It's so exciting to be, um, at this moment in time, you know, I have a 17 year old daughter and um, she's so proud of her Latina roots. Um, I just did a duet that will be out this year with Wendy Moten, uh, who is a black American, amazing woman. She was number two on The Voice this year, amazing woman of faith. So it's just things are changing and it's just becoming enriched, you know, all this culture and um, it's touching everything. And I, to me, it's exciting. Yeah, I agree. And I, I do. I think that there's so much um, just differentiation when you're really looking for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Otherwise, you're stuck into that rat reel, wheel, you're stuck into the media driven, you know, conversations. And if we can remove ourselves from that and show up in a place of, of, I think, authenticity, like we are now, and just curiosity, more so than anything, rather than being um, taught at, it's an exploration of, right, mm -hmm. and, and really learning about other people and other cultures and their journeys. I think it's just there's something beautiful about it that I don't think we lean into as much, which goes for full circle to my exploration of Frida and your exploration of being a, a Mexican-American. Um, I'm curious, how has your daughter like been in, in that understanding of who she is and leaning into her own gifts and talents? Has she leaned into her Spanish like ability to speak or being in Mexico a lot with you? Has she gone on any of your journeys? She loves Mexico. So she loves to, to be there. She loves to be, you know, with our family in Texas. And um, I just think that she has an awareness that will um, suit her and encourage her as she steps into her adult. You know, I mean, to me, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing that she speaks into that she's Mexican American, even though like me, she wouldn't, <clears throat> you wouldn't know it by, by seeing her, she has an awareness of it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how this works in her life. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really amazing. And I, I think it lends itself even to the conversation of what's to come through the book that you just released, The Shaman Heart. And I'd love to hear um, about this collection of 26 Tales of Transformation. Well, I'll show you. I'm so excited. Yay! Right here. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, look at the uh, Mayan ruin. Is it a oh, Mayan? Which this, one is it? This is the Pyramid of Teotihuacan. Amazing. Mexico City. So um, I was 
I guess, you know, I guess it's been 10 years ago. I had, was at a crossroad. I had gone through a divorce. I didn't want to get divorced. I was just completely broken open. And I had leaned into my therapeutic, you know, I had a great therapist and of course, church, traditional churches. And I was invited to come on this sacred journey to the pyramids of Teotihuacan. And so I said, I need to go. I just knew that I needed to go. So I went and my experience there, it's laid out like a journey um, that is an invitation to look inside your heart at what's working, what's not working, what are you willing to give up? And it's just a really powerful way to experience um, uh, an invitation of, of transformation for your life. And it's very spiritual journey. So um, this past year, I was invited to write in a book called Sacred Death. And I wrote about my grandmother's passing I felt called to share that. And um, from that, the experience was so profound that I called the publisher, uh, Laura DeFranco at Brave Healer Productions. And I said, I would like to lead a journey with 25 authors in the pyramids of Teotihuacan. I would like to take them on this journey and then... Uh, by the way, part of the journey was going to Frida's house. Yes. And then we would come back to our homes and we would all write a story sharing how each of us somehow turned something that was painful in our life into passion and purpose. And so on January the 5th, 2022, a few months ago in the middle of the pandemic and a snowstorm and canceled flights, 26 authors descended into the pyramids of Teotihuacan, this picture. And we took a journey that I led with my husband, Jeremy Pager. And then we all went home and we wrote our stories. And the book came out last week and is, you know, doing amazing. So it's, it's amazing. And it's really um, touching to learn and just have all these witnesses, these stories of how people and God turned this pain into purpose for these people to then share their stories with others. And the reviews are coming in and it's so, you know, people, a lot of people keep these things that happen to them, you know, it's a burden that they carry. And this is an invitation for anyone not to feel alone.